everyone and welcome back to my subscribers. And if you're not already a subscriber, I'll put a link here for you. Today I've got the LaRue OBR. Now OBR stands for Optimized Battle Rifle. And this case, this rifle is pretty much set up for three gun. It's got a 16 inch barrel to keep the weight down, although it is a heavy barrel. So it is a little heavy for my taste. Without the optics on here, and this rifle right now is set up for three gun open division, being that it's got two optics on there, red dot canted off to the side. But this gun without the optics weighs about seven and a half pounds. And if you've seen my other video on the Black Rain upper and lower build that I did, that rifle came in, I believe, at just over six pounds. So it's a lot lighter, but the barrel that I used in that is not quite as heavy as this one. This one's got a full heavy barrel, if you will. So the rifle, for my taste, is a little bit heavier than what I'm, what I'm used to using, but uh, it, it's, it shoots very nice <laughs> nonetheless. And for the price, these guns without optics are around $2,200, I believe. Um, the furniture, it's got a nice, nice little grip here. I believe LaRue makes this themselves. It feels really good in the hand. It's got a nice little swell there on the sides. and. It's got the, uh, the added back strap back here like a lot of the uh, Magpul stuff has. And then it's got the Magpul CTR stock under here. But then it has the LaRue riser. And this is basically a cheek, cheek riser to get your face up a little higher so you can see through the scope a little easier. But the cool thing about this is that when you have the stock completely collapsed, the, uh, the charging handle is going to bump into this. Well, this is spring-loaded, so when you cock it like so, the riser actually moves backwards, so that it allows you to cock the uh, the gun while the stock is always de or depressed all the way down. You know, when it's when it's extended, it's not a big deal, but when it's down like so, so this little spring-loaded gizmo, you can actually add that to your your Magpul CTRs. I'll put a link to their stuff here in the in the video description below if you want to check this out. Really neat. I personally don't use one on my rifle because I have, the cheek weld is not an issue for me, but it came stock with this gun. The uh, the upper on this thing. Well, let's go to the let's go to the optics first. This is using a Bresser scope. You know, I've been using the uh, one to four power Bresser on my three gun. This one's like a one to three or a, I'm sorry, a one to. 4 to 12. Man, I'm totally off. Still thinking 3 gun on the limited division for me. Um, it's got the lighted reticle just like mine does. Not too keen on it myself about the lighted reticles. You can see the review here. And then we're using a Bresser red dot here on the side with a LaRue mount. And the LaRue mounts are fairly expensive for a mount, but they're, they're quick release. So we're going to take this off here. So you just kind of pull backwards and bend up and then you bend up here and then the scope comes right off. So here's our quick release and these do return to zero. I've got a couple of these LaRue mounts and I've taken them off the gun and put them back on and the gun is still zeroed. This is the, the canted or the offset mount from LaRue. So if you can envision shooting upright using your scope at long range targets and then you have to run from one shooting position to the next and you have some close in targets maybe 50 yards or less you can cant the gun over to the side get the red dot up and down with your field of view use both eyes open while you're running and uh, it allows you to engage the multiple targets that you need to without dealing with the, the distortion of a, magna, uh, a magnifying glass like the scope there with the 4X. That's why I like the 1 to 4X on my 3 gun because I only need one optic. But in this case, it's got two. And this does put you in the open division as I mentioned earlier. So we'll take this one off and set it off to the side too. So right here, the gun weighs about seven and a half pounds as you see it. The upper is connected, or rather the foregrips are actually connected to the upper itself. You'll notice it's bolted together right here. So these made up real good. This is supposed to help improve accuracy. Also, you'll notice here there's a, a line right here. This whole top part, this Picatinny rail from here 
all the way out to the end is one piece and then it's screwed in to the free float upper. This upper here is free floated so the barrel's not touching anything and it's connected to the upper back here as well. Once we take it apart you can see how the rail is connected back here. This top rail is connected with these screws. Back here there's two screws in the, in the upper that actually connects the rail to that. So this is supposed to give you a little bit more accuracy. Helps with stability I guess. But it's, it's, it's got a very nice feel to it. I really like the small diameter um, free float tubes. That's why I use the Troy on my Black Rain 3 gun. These little hand pieces right here actually screw off and then you can put rails. So wherever you need rails or hand stops, you can just put those on there. Uh, it's got the, the marks on the top of the rails and then back here it's got the little OBR things. Kind of cool. There is virtually no wiggle between the upper and lower. I mean this sucker is nice. The lower itself is machined and let's take that. Let's, let's actually take a look inside the get that apart if I can. This thing is very very tight. The dust cover it's got a nice little engraving there. I close that so my bolt doesn't fall out when I take this apart. So like I said this is very very tight. I mean even it's undone at the top or at the front here but it's just hinged incredibly tight. So if you don't like slop in your uppers and lowers, <laughs> this is what you need. Uh, taking a look in here, you can see those bolts. There's two of them right there. So that's what holds that rail on top. Okay. Now, the lower itself, it's very nice machine work in here. The walls look extra thick or a little bit thicker than a normal uh, cast one. But I think what really I liked about this over the black rain that I had on my rifle is the fact that they put a radius on the trigger guard right here. Now most people probably don't notice this because they take the rifle out of the case, they go sit at the bench, they shoot the rifle and that's it. Or even in three gun world, you pull it off the rack, you go shoot, you go put it back on the rack, you're done. My guns, I end up carrying them around a lot because we hunt with them and just, you know, basically have fun with them. So you're constantly holding the gun, carrying it like this, and your hand, if you notice right there, my finger, my non-trigger finger, the one right next to it, rubs right there. So when I do the black rain, let me show you the black rain for comparison. Look at that sharp edge right there. And there's even a corner where this Magpul grip doesn't mate up with that. So what happens is it ends up digging in your finger. And I don't wear gloves. It's, uh, it's always like 100 degrees here in Texas. So I almost never wear gloves. So that is something I really dislike about this. So I may sell this lower or I may just take a file and radius it and then use like a marker or something. But I really like the, the, the cast ones like this. This one here I put on the little, it's got a Magpul uh, grip as well so it, it's taken away. So this is really not a really good res representation. This is my 6.8. So, but this is nice and, and smooth right here. And this is the gun I hunt with most of the time. Uh, comparing the two to each other, you can really see the difference between a forged lower and a milled lower. It's just a, a lot more cleaner lines, you know, sharper looking edges when it comes, and you, you know, you can, they get a little bit more detail work on these right here. Looking at the, uh, the magwell, it's, it's just really nice. I really like the looks of a milled lower. The trigger that came with it is a two-stage greasel or gristling. I'll, I'll put the words here because I just cannot say it. Very, very clean trigger. My son was able to shoot this rifle at 30 yards using the red dot once we got it zeroed and was popping clays with it no problem whatsoever. And since the gun does weigh seven and a half pounds, at this moment it doesn't have a flash, it don't, doesn't have a muzzle brake on it, it has a flash suppressor. So you would think that it would recoil a little bit more, but the gun hardly moved at all. I think the added weight really took care of that. The buffer tube on it 
is also numbered, which is pretty nice. If anything, it's cool. The cool factor is there for that. But uh, if you're ever trying to ever get your stock at the right spot, I'm always looking at the bottom to see if it's in the same spot once I loan my rifle to someone else or I adjust it getting in and out of the car. But this, these numbering, I really like the numbers right here. I may pick one of these up just to put on my rifle just for that. But this is a very nice rifle. But like I said, you're going to pay for it at over $2,000. The bolt is chrome plated. It's got a nice little LaRue logo there as well. The gas key is staked. Just, just quality is phenomenal on this. The barrel itself, as I mentioned, is, is a 16 inch heavy barrel and the barrel twist rate on this is one in eight. So we got one in eight, one in nine, and one in seven. One in seven is usually, from what I understand, shooting the really heavy bullets. Um, one in nine is for the 55s, and the one in eight is kind of a nice medium in between the two. I've got a one in eight for my Black Rain rifle, and it, the accuracy on it is, is great. Like I said, they advertise a uh, one MOA for this. So let's take a look at the gas block on this rifle. There's a switch right here, that's what that little silver thing is. And right now it's kind of on the left side if you look over here you can tell it's been pushed so when it's on the left side like this it's set for normal operation if you wanted to run a suppressor on this gun you would push that over to the right it would click over here to the on the right side and that would change the dynamics of the gas so that less gas comes back into the action because of the the way that the suppressor acts on the rifle so that your rifle would actually work with a suppressor. If, if you don't have one of these, your gun may or may not work with a suppressor. just kind of depends. So that's a nice little option too, not to ever I'll run a suppressor on anything like this. But uh, uh, all in all, it's a very nice rifle. Well, anyways, thanks for watching, and please subscribe for more competition shooting and gun reviews. Thanks.